Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us on our inaugural session of Tax Mini Trainings. My name is Remy Scott. I uh, am been a member of Tax Staff uh, just a little over ten years. Um, uh, my main focus is on user support, but I have been in the trenches in the network security and operations group, uh, as well as uh, lead admin on my own cluster, uh, the Catapult cluster. Uh, we're going to do a quick little session today, um, and I figured what better place to start than kind of at the beginning. You know, if you're curious how us at tax staff or researchers actually access our list of supercomputers, Stampede 2, Frontera, Lone Star 6, even Ranch, most common way is using Secure Shell. Uh, so that's kind of what this little talk's going to be about today. We're hoping, you know, maybe about 10 minutes or so, it's not going to be too long. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything, just go ahead and drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll be posting this uh, recording later, probably on YouTube and maybe someplace else. I'm not sure, but do keep in mind that uh, you'll be able to see this again. And we hope to do some more. Um, some, I just want to say, first off, a lot of things we're going to cover in these trainings can also be found in our user guides. This is a great resource for uh, new users and veterans alike. Uh, these are regularly updated. This is a grab I did last week from our front page of the Frontera, uh, Frontera uh, user guide, but we have them for every system we run here. So a valuable, valuable resource. I always recommend checking these out, especially for a few months to see if anything's changed. Okay, so logging in, you know, what are you going to need to do this? What are you going to need to access our, our resources here at TAC? Well, the first thing you'll need is a TAC account. You can get that through the user portal. Uh, you need an email. You need, uh, you need to be affiliated with an institution. It'll ask you all those questions. You'll confirm. You'll get your account. Um, you'll need MFA. We require a, a, a multi-factor challenge to access our systems as well. And you can use just about any authenticating uh, app to do that. There's a ton of popular ones. Um, you'll also need to be a member of a project with an active allocation. I, that may sound a little confusing. We'll get into what that is in future trainings, but uh, you, you will need to do that. Like your PI or advisor will, will put you on one so you can actually access the systems. And then last but not least, and probably most importantly, is you're going to need some kind of terminal application that supports SSH. Now, almost all modern operating systems nowadays include a terminal. Uh, even Windows now has its own terminal that supports uh, SSH communication to systems, um, which is, you know, it's been around uh, a minute, uh, but it's still probably the most common way that staff and researchers uh, log in and access our systems to run jobs, check quotas, you name it, right? So what is SSH, you may ask? Um, it's a, it stands for Secure Shell. It is a protocol that has been around, I want to say, since about 1995. It was invented uh, by a researcher in Helsinki uh, to actually replace kind of the open protocols that were being used at the time to connect to machines. Basically, what Secure Shell does for us is it gives us an encrypted end-to-end -end connection. It kind of uses a server-client paradigm. There'll be a you know, a client or a daemon running on your on, on, or a ser on your server side, there'll be a daemon running on your server side, and then you as the client, you know, we would commonly say SSH into the system. Um, and, and SSH can also uh, be, it can also mean the utilities that come and support the SSH protocol, like secure copying. And I mean, there's a, there's a huge list of uh, these things that you can do with SSH and to have a, ser uh, a secure connection to our systems. Now, TAC definitely has a, 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 a has a, a commonality between their systems. There's something that you'll see uh, commonly across all the systems when you when you SSH in. Um, and those things are like your project membership. It's kind of like your account status and maybe uh, what your available SUs are. If you don't if you don't know what that is, the, uh, we'll, we'll get into more detail. That's kind of like your currency you use to run jobs. It'll show you kind of the expiration date on the projects you're, you're a member of. Uh, disk quotas are very important. You got to keep your quotas in check. Otherwise, you know, you can't run jobs. It'll, it'll let you know. But uh, it's important to, to think about that. Um, this is kind of what it looks like, you know, when you log in. I'll, I'll give you a demo here in, in a sec. But, you know, you're going to see what we call the message of the day. 
Um, if the system's under maintenance, you'll see that information here. Um, like I said, you'll see your quotas. You'll see the, the you know the availability of of the space you have on the different uh, on the different file systems that that come in you know that that are attached or mounted to the uh, the the RTAC resources. Uh, this is an example of Frontera, which is a uh, you know, still the largest, fastest academic supercomputer. Um, we're very proud of that. Uh, and uh, it's an excellent tool. So um, let's go, let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. We'll do a little, we'll do a little live demo. What, what can go wrong, right? Um, I use a terminal called MOBA Xterm. For some of you veterans out there, you might be familiar with this. It's been around quite a while. Uh, very popular in the... Uh, non-Linux uh, using crowd, non-Unix-based uh, operating systems. It really kind of gives you that feel. But, uh, you know, if you're on a Mac, you can use your terminal. If you're on uh, many, any flavor, really, of, uh, of Linux, whether it be, you know, like a Debian build, like Ubuntu, or if you're running something like elementary or anything like that, uh, it'll have a terminal built in. It'll have the SSH commands ready to go, ready to use. Um, for you, uh, but like I said, I like I like MOBA X term. It, uh, it, it it I've used it for so long that I'm used to it, and uh, I like some of the little features it has. Of course, like I said, we do a live demo, and uh, <laughs> my computer's having fun. I'm just trying to get here to my uh, to my to my shell. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen here real quick. So we have a nice fresh for everybody. See, um, like most commands in Linux, you know, it'll have a, it'll have a man page or, um, you know, you can do a slash help kind of thing to, you know, show you, uh, the, you know, the different options and flags that, you know, you can throw uh, uh, when you're doing this command. Um, the way I always recommend SSHing in the machines, especially like the, the first time or, or a way that, let me put it this way, a way that always works is uh, basically, you're going to use the SSH command and then you almost write it like an email, kind of like my, my account name is Scott R E and I'll do at, and today I'm just going to, I'm going to do Frontera. Okay. So we're going to go frontera.tac.utexas.edu. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like an email there. Right. And so it's going to reach out to Frontera. It's going to ask, uh, it's going to do a little handshake here. Um, I'm actually, I've actually got my SSH key in my uh, known hosts uh, directory, which is something you can find out how to do in the user guide. Uh, it, it basically uh, prompts you just for your multi-factor uh, challenge here, which, like I said, I, I use a little thing on my phone. Uh, you can use any authenticator, Duo, Google, Apple, they, they all have one. So I'm gonna type in this super secret code here, uh, which is going to, get us on the machine and like that like that screenshot i showed you earlier it's kind of like you know it's going to give us, of us the message of the day um it's going to give a link to our you know our, our usage policies which you do okay when you get a you have to accept those when you get an account you know, it's just kind of uh reminding you um and then again like it shows me kind of my project balances you know uh, how many available SUs I had. Like I said, we'll, we'll have a future mini training on that, but that's uh, it's kind of like currency for running your jobs. Um, and then I'll have some tips. Uh, so that's kind of the stuff you see. Um, and then from here, you know, is how you can, you know, develop your software, uh, experiment with your software, say like in an iDev session or something, or uh, build your job files and submit them through uh, Slurm or Job Scheduler, uh, connect to other systems, uh, move data around um, between your file systems. Uh, but I mean, the important thing is, I mean, this is how you're getting on. So uh, and I highly recommend um, remembering these techniques and uh, it's gonna be your easiest and most common way uh, to access our supercomputers. We do have other methods, uh, especially um, with things like Jupyter Notebooks and uh, a, a lot of uh, R and some of our uh, visualization software. We do have uh, portals that allow you more of a graphical user interface, which is you know very appropriate for, for the, that type of research and, and that type of software. Um, but like I said, 
this is kind of the bread and butter of uh, of getting on to uh, our, our resources here at TAC, all the big systems, our archival system. Um, it's just, it's kind of what everybody does for the most part. And I highly recommend learning uh, how to do this if you want to uh, connect to uh, our TAC systems. Um, so, uh, like I said, if you're interested in learning anything more, uh, we are going to have some more of these mini trainings in the future, and we also have uh, a litany of, of other offerings. Um, some of our main stuff is on the uh, on, a, on our TAC learning portal. Um, I've got the URL there. Uh, you can you can find this online, you know, uh, and also YouTube. We have a lot of uh, we have a lot of videos on YouTube. Um, just search, you know, Texas Advanced Computing Center on YouTube. I was going to post the URL, but uh, I, I didn't. You can find it. You know how to use YouTube. I, I have faith in you. Um, and again, thanks for tuning in. Like I said, we have to, we hope to have more of uh, these in the future. If you have any questions, comments, please drop them into the chat and uh, we'll try to answer. You can also reach out to us through our uh, the TAC website and the uh, TAC user portal. Again, uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll see you next time.